so y'all might remember uh, the uh, pastor from North Carolina, the, 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 the of course, descendant of Confederate Army General Robert E. Lee. Uh, he went to the MTV uh, Video Awards and he made the strong statement denouncing uh, white supremacy. He, here's some of what he had to say. The, the Civil War general whose statue was at the center of violence in Charlottesville. We have made my ancestor an idol of white supremacy, racism, and hate. As a pastor, it is my moral duty to speak out against racism, America's original sin. Today, I call on all of us with privilege and power to answer God's call to confront racism and white supremacy head on. Well, when Reverend Robert W. Lee the fourth got back to his church in Claremont, mm -hmm. North Carolina. Folks were not happy. They were upset. And then they said they wanted to vote as to whether or not he would continue to be pastor. He said, no, that ain't going to happen. I quit. He joins us right now. Uh, Reverend Lee, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Uh, so it, it had to be stunning to you to be criticized by your church members for taking a stand? I mean, was it about the stand against white supremacy? Was it about you speaking about Black Lives Matter or the Women's March, or was it all of the above? Well, I think the thing that we need to remember first and foremost is that um, this is certainly detracting from a mission and a movement that's working to create justice for everyone. And I think that there are people that are still in this country today that are concerned about that movement, whether it's Black Lives Matter or the Women's March or whatever problems that people have, people have problems with those movements. And they're not willing to admit it until they realize that it's getting into their own backyard. And when it gets into their own backyard, they don't like it. But, but, and what, but what's crazy though is they wanted to vote as to whether or not you continue as the pastor. And uh, they, would, they were saying what? That this was bringing too much attention to the church? They thought that it was bringing negative attention to the church. Now, this is just some members. This is not all the members of the church. This is not the entirety of the church. But it was loud right. enough voices that were concerned about what was going on that they felt that they needed to talk about this. And I just was not going to be in a position that I would lose my job over speaking up and speaking out about justice. And uh, this, this is a fundamental problem uh, that white preachers, white pastors have trying to speak to the issue of white supremacy and white congregants say, nah, that's good. We're not trying to have that. Well, I think it's an awkward situation because certainly, you know, people pay our paychecks, you know, white people pay our paychecks. And if we're not saying what they want to hear, then that certainly changes the dynamics of things. But I, I want to say unequivocally, I don't regret what I said. Um, I, I support what I said at the MTV Video Music Awards and since then. Because I think we have a mission and a movement here. I think we have to remember that there are people um, affected by DACA and by the Hurricane Harvey that were disproportionately persons of color and um, Hispanic persons. And we have to remember that this is an issue of justice and that God calls us to work for justice. And I'm not going to let a church get in the way of that. I want to bring in Reverend Jim Wallace. He's the author of America's Original Sin, Racism, White Privilege, and the Bridge to a New America. Reverend Wallace, you've talked about this, calling on uh, white preachers to speak to their members. And here is, here's a white preacher who does that, and the members say, uh, you're crossing the boundaries. Well, I want to say how proud I am of this young pastor, Rob Lee. Uh, you're, you're doing what the gospel calls us to, to do. And one of the things you said that I thought was so important is we have to see these issues as theological. You said we have to see them through a theological lens. This isn't just politics or partisan politics. This is what theology tells us. And, 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 and white supremacy uh, is an idol. The whole idea of white Christianity is an idol. And so, you know, uh, this idol of white supremacy, this this idol of racism is is keeping white Christians away from God because idols keep people away from God, and that's what's happening here. So what you're doing, Pastor, is you're you're loving your people enough to preach the gospel to them, and that's what is at the heart of this. This is theological for us. This is the time. This is the moment. 
and young pastors like you speaking up gives my heart great encouragement. So thank you very much. Uh, Reverend Lee, Reverend Lee, what's next for you? Uh, have you heard from other churches who said they would love to have you as their pastor? Uh, what has been the response? Well, I've had some great responses from some great people. I've also had some negative responses from some interesting people. Um, but but I don't know what's next. What, what, hold on one second. When you say some interesting people, uh, are those prominent members of the cloth? I wouldn't say prominent. I'd say they're uh, Twitter trolls who are trying to get out, get under my skin, um, uh, people who don't want to have this conversation. Uh, but I have had some positive responses from people like Reverend Wallace over there and from countless others, Diana butler Bass, um, prominent theologians who are speaking up and speaking out about these issues. Um, Roger Greer is a friend of mine. He was happy to uh, talk to me and encourage me. And I just think that all of these people who have been a great cloud of witnesses for me Remind me that the spirit is working and will continue to work um, despite the fact that people don't want to make a move for justice um, through theology or through politics or whatever we're, channels or avenues we have. Reverend Wallace, uh, Reverend Wallace, Reverend Lee, of course, was a pastor of the church since April. What, what is your advice uh, to other young white pastors uh, who uh, may want to be uh, aggressive in speaking out but are afraid of losing their job? Well, you know, um, finally, we're called to ministry by God. Uh, this is a calling. This isn't a, a career choice that you make in seminary. We're called by God. And, and, and if we're not responding to God's calling, this sin, this America's original sin, uh, what this was, was Christians a long time ago said, we can't do to indigenous people and kidnap Africans what we are doing if those people are made in the image of God. So we'll say they weren't. <laughs> they weren't made in the image of God. We have, we have thrown away a model day. That's, that, that's the, 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 the height of the sin. We've thrown away the image of God. And when pastors say, no, 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 Genesis 1 was right. We are all made in the image of God. And this whole, whole idea of racial difference and racial superiority is a sin. And my friend uh, Brian Massengale, who's a professor at Fordham, always asks his white students, have they ever heard racism named and called a sin from their pulpits? And the answer is always no, always no. This is the time for every pulpit in America to say that racism is a sin against God and is an idol that is keeping us away from God. And the process of doing that in every congregation, white congregation, would be a very powerful thing. And Rob Bell is doing, Rob Lee's doing that. Reverend Lee, uh, last comment very from great. you. Reverend Lee, last comment from you, and that is, uh, has this uh, fortified you to speak out even more forcefully against white supremacy as a result of uh, you having to resign from your church? You know, I'm resolute that God has called me for such a time as this to borrow from the book of Esther. But there is a moment and a place for us all in this life where we were created to speak up. And I think this is the moment for me, at least for right now. And I'm, I'm not going to back down. I don't plan to. I don't have any plans to. Reverend Robert Lee IV, uh, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Reverend Jim Wallace, thanks a bunch. And folks, again, be sure to get uh, Reverend Wallace's book, uh, America's Original Sin. Uh, gentlemen, thanks a lot. Thank you. Bless you, Pastor. Thanks, Skip, Jack, and Bill. Thank you, Roland. Love you, Thank Roland, man. Roland. Great job, baby. Yeah, appreciate it. Is. Awesome, Roland. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right, thanks a lot. Folks, real quick here. Hold on. Just give y'all just give me 90 seconds. Real quick here. This is a perfect example. White preachers uh, want to be safe in speaking these conservative issues, but not wanting to address, as Reverend Wallace said, original sin. What conservative issues? Basically, they said the Bible teaches us that racism and injustice is a sin. America's, no, 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 no. America's, uh, right, America's right. original sin. That's what they're saying. What's going on now that didn't go on 100 years ago, 150 oh, right. years ago, before Dred Scott? Oh, what's, what's the no, difference? No, no, no. What is the difference? Wait, wait, what I'm saying is this here. Uh, white evangelical leaders are more concerned, and I've always said this, about abortion, 
about same-sex marriage as opposed to issues like this. But and that's always been one of my issues. You know, interesting, Roland, uh, this is the United Church of Christ. This is the right. same yeah. Yeah. Right. right. What is the progressive right. denomination? Exactly. Yeah. Jeremiah Wright, you yeah. know, Otis Moss the third. Right. What are they going Andy to Young. say, Roland? Right, that's Spencer. Right. Yeah. Andy Young, this that's right. notion of this UCC, uh, uh, really, like you said, this progressive uh, church here, uh, Dr. No, King. Progressive denomination. Denomination. Right. That's this right. church right. may not be progressive. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, but, but this is an issue in terms gotcha. of a letter from Birmingham jail, right? right. In, in, what in terms of difference criticism. does it make? That's the question. Oh, no. It, does, it, it doesn't make one. Life, what what difference, difference will it make? It does, all of these well, things. Well, 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 pastor well, stepping up to the well, plate well, in terms of more We can make some. But we can say this. All right. Just any pastor. Robert, we No, first of all, it can't make a difference if it causes other white pastors to find some courage. That's right. I got to go to break. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.